Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined from all the way across the pond, as I like to say here, by Nick Rion, who is in London. How are you doing, Nick, in the UK? Thank you, John. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yeah, and Nick is a personal and professional relationship coach, supporting individuals to bring build strong, healthy, and sustainable relationships. Uh, your relationship knowledge was learned the hard way, losing your mother as a teenager, experiencing a challenging start to professional life in the corporate world where you often felt out of water. Uh, you embarked on a journey of self-discovery, which ultimately led you to coaching. You started coaching 2017, trained with one of the world's leading coaching schools, the Co-Active Training Institute. And now you help clients build relationships built on honesty, self-respect, equality, and works with them to improve their communication and self-confidence. Um, you grew up in Burgundy, France, but now live in East London, as we said. And what we're going to talk about today is the 10 habits of successful relationships. So, um, Nick, let's just uh, kind of baseline this. Where, how did you come up with the, the 10 to begin with? And then you can sort of tell us the 10 and then we can focus in on why they're important. Yeah, sure. So um, I, how did I come up with it? So um, I realized that where I come from, um, in from Burgundy, um, I come from a family that is a family of farmers and wine producers. Um, communication and and is made around a lot of conflicts and uh, blaming. That's that's how it was at least uh, early in my in my life, and so I had I experienced that uh, throughout the kind of the twenty first years of my life mm -hmm. right um and so later when i so i started as a software engineer my career um, and then i moved later uh into change management uh where i met um a few people that worked in the same space and it made me discover that there's uh, another way to build relationships a way to build relationships that um allow for uh, conflicts to be quickly solved and in a, in a straightforward way, right? So conflicts then are not painful, mm -hmm. okay? So I was thinking, okay, so now I know that there's a way to build what we call trusting and supportive relationships, right? How do we do this? That's That was the work right. that I've done the next, you know, that I did the next five years, kind of studying and and working on um, why working in change management, working in myself, understanding, okay, how do I build a relationship where, um, you know, I solve conflicts easily and we can talk about things and 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 improve a relationship, et cetera, make it grow, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. right? Uh, so that's how I came up with those 10 habits. Mm -hmm. And just, those are, those yeah, ten. and just for a second, I just want to go back because um, you mentioned like conflict being obviously, you know, the root of a lot of all of this is, and it seems that it's often divided into two groups. Like there's one, there's one group that kind of embraces conflict, right? <laughs> Head on. And, you know, yeah. uh, and then there's the other group who maybe are uh, avoid conflict at all cost. So you have a huge imbalance and it doesn't work for either side. Yeah, I think, I think. I like to put it a slightly different way, which is a spec. Mm -hmm. um, there's at one one hand there is the conflict avoiders. I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm just going to do everything to fit and to avoid any conflict. And on the other side, there is the like the the conflict. Um, they they look for conflict uh, in everything they do, uh, and they like conflict. They want conflict, but to the point that it's um, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Right, conflict is natural. It's normal because it's basically uh, different needs that are not being met. Right, mm -hmm. two two different people have two different needs, and in their actions, they they're not meeting each other's needs. There's that's where there's a conflict, and that's normal. Mm -hmm. Right, what's not what's not really normal is that it's painful. It shouldn't be painful. Right. 
that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you talk about, you know, there are people that don't like conflict and the people that like uh, conflict too much, I think conflict is fine, right? But um, obviously it is, it can be painful. And so people don't like it. Some people don't like it. And some others find, um, you know, that they, they kind of are legitimate. They find themselves to be legitimate into, into fighting. Right. 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 But it's still painful for both. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what are the, what are the uh, 10 habits? And then we can dive into a couple of them. Sure thing. So, um, Basically, those 10 habits are what I found was uh, were necessary to work on to in order to build a um, trusting and supportive relationship, right? Um, those 10 habits are divided in three groups, uh, which I call, so the first group is all about emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, so in there, you will find self-awareness, uh, self-management, self-care, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so self, you know, if you go into self-awareness, it's all about understanding what your emotions are, what needs they're coming from, um, and what values you, you, you want to stand for, et cetera, et cetera. So it's about yourself, right? And how you're reacting to the world. Self-management is more about how you make sure that those emotions don't control you. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, when you are in a conversation or in a situation, whatever it is, that you know you have your emotions and that's normal, that's very human. How do you make sure that they're not controlling you in that situation? Okay, so so that's the emotional intelligence part, and then you've got a second part that is how you approach relationships, right? That's the mindset mm -hmm. part, right? So in there, you've got things like assertiveness, for example. What are your boundaries? You, what are you standing for? And how are you standing for it, right? Standing up for it. So how are you making them respected, mm -hmm. right? Um, in there, you've got also curiosity. How do you approach a conversation? I, do you make sure that you um, listen to understand? someone when yep. someone is talking rather than listening to uh, argue and to um, send a counterpoint do you see the difference yes of course um transparency that's a very important mm -hmm. one um making sure that you being transparent about your intentions being clear about your intentions where you're trying to get and what you're trying to solve mm -hmm. okay when you're really aware of your emotions and your needs it's very simple to just say to the other person, this is my need. It's very important to me. And when it's not being met, this is how I feel. Right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you about a couple of questions here. I mean, you touched on self-awareness, and I think that self-awareness is one of the most critical things that people can can work on because I think lack of self-awareness is what holds people back a lot in careers, in life, in relationships, and, and all of that. And we don't really, to be perfectly honest, we today we live in a society where all of the pervasive kind of popular culture it's all about you know it's not about looking at yourself it's about projecting outwards and mm -hmm. and the other things that you mentioned you know things like you know even mindset like assertiveness curiosity you know transparency um you know these are things that I'm not sure. I think as again, I think the pervasive kind of popular culture is undermining a lot of these. So it's I, I think in some ways it's 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 quite hard for people to go through this process now because they have to kind of take a little bit of step back from the from the world around them almost absolutely and um where where it comes from um you know where does the change come from like how people decide you know from one day to another i want I want to work on those habits, for example. They don't, they, you know, nobody kind of wakes up in the morning and say, I want to be more transparent now. Mm -hmm. People say, uh, I have painful conflicts and I want my relationship to be more fluid. I want to be more, have more serenity, more confidence in my relationships. How do I do that? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where those habits come from. Right. Yeah. Um, did I answer your question? 
Yes, absolutely. And then the the last couple of uh, habits. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's one more in the mindset that I like to talk about is vulnerability. Um, it's all about um, you know being again being transparent, but more um, not hesitating to show your weakness. Mm -hmm. And that's how you feel. Like if you feel, you know, if you're sad, if you, um, if you're scared, just mm -hmm. like to mention that because showing vulnerability builds trust. If you're vulnerable to someone, uh, this someone will show more easily willingness to help mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Right. Will trust you because you, you basically kind of showing yourself. Uh, in front of them, yeah, uh, and and just 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 on that, uh, Nick, uh, because a lot of people, and I think this vulnerability word has been thrown around a lot right now. It's unfortunately mm -hmm. become a bit of a buzzword, right? Um, and I think there is genuine vulnerability, but it's also quite it's, it's quite a scary thing for people because people equate vulnerability with weakness, and we're not we're not taught we're taught not to show weakness. So it's a kind of it's it's a weird dichotomy for us. Mm, absolutely that's why you associate and you know the first one obviously to say that people usually are uh, reluctant to to mm -hmm. be vulnerable but you associate when you associate that with assertiveness that works a lot better right. but you, you can be you can show weakness but if a person in front of you is uh taking advantage of it that's where your assertiveness mm -hmm. assertiveness uh, takes on. Does that make sense? Yeah, like yeah you have too. the right balance between the two, right? You can't be just all always vulnerable and and let yeah. people take advantage of it. Yeah, no, I, I mean I agree with you because I think it takes a level of self confidence to be um, vulnerable, and to, because as you said, then you need the assertiveness to make sure nobody's trying to take advantage of that, and there's a positive outcome from it. Um, and and I think and that idea of assertiveness again, it, it's one of those things that I think people have strange ideas about. I mean, some people think assertiveness is just like being a bull in a china shop, right? Um, as opposed to, it just means like you know, in in many ways, kind of standing up for what you believe in, and there's lots of and and what you really feel, and there are different ways of manifesting that. Yeah. So there's, I think you said it really well. This is standing up, standing up for what you believe in. What I like, the way I like to say it is you, as a human being, you have a, a set of values that belong to you. This is making sure that those values are being respected. All mm. right. Um, making sure they're respected doesn't mean that you have to yell or <laughs> to be, you know, aggressive towards it. Um, first of all, if you're really confident towards your values, generally you're very calm about it okay. right you because you're confident you uh if someone if you have integrity and someone uh, goes and and kind of um you can break this um you're gonna be uh you'll be look i'm that's that's my integrity it's not yours it's mine yeah. here it's not being respected that's it right Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I mean, I think, um, again, you know, we live in a world where, you know, uh, you know, people have become so polarized that they're not even able to see other people's points of view half the time. And they think, OK, if you don't believe what I believe or your values don't match my values, then we have no relationship. Right. Which yeah. is ridiculous. Um, I and mean, that's... Obviously, obviously, you know, there are there are uh, exceptions to that. But in the general rule, that's a ridiculous way to live. Absolutely. But that's where there is the curiosity habit. Mm -hmm. Listening to understand the other, it's not only about your values, it's also about understanding um, the other person, where they're coming from and what are what their values are um, as well. And it doesn't have to be yours, but mm -hmm. understanding where people come from, what you know values they are defending, um, they will help you a lot with finding a solution that suits both mm -hmm. parties. Yeah. And, and I, I like the way that you come back to the, you know, the curiosity piece as well, because, you know, cur uh, curiosity is the antidote to kind of false, uh, if you like, false beliefs, put it that mm -hmm. way, right? Absolutely. Um, what is it they always say? It's not the things. It's not the things that you. Uh, it's not the thing. It's the things that you believe to be true that aren't, or the things that really get you in the end. 
Yeah, yeah. I I'm always get surprised uh, with myself um, because obviously those habits, you know, you're not, you never sure. master them. Yeah, of course. And and I always get surprised by how sometimes I get like, this is the value they they wanted to to show and wanted to defend, and and I've been kind of you know believing in something completely different all mm -hmm. the way because while we're not really used to translate and we need to exercise that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, and that's how we evolve. How we evolve as people, and uh, so if you take up or um you know are very closed or very rigid in what you believe and you as you said the listening part the curiosity and the listening part i feel that listening is my goodness that is a, a skill that is rapidly being lost mm -hmm. uh, because we're we live in this instant society and instant culture where you know my it's it's answering first is more important than giving a yeah. can than giving a considered answer. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, there is a third part to yes. to it, as I mentioned earlier, um, that's about um, specific situations. Uh, so in there, I I give more uh, practical uh, tools to you. So for example, how do you have difficult conversations? Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you challenge a relationship? How do you give feedback, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's more about, um, you know, in so frameworks that to be used in specific situations. Right, right. right. Yeah, because, I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, we're pretty, um, we're pretty good at uh, often about sort of reinforcing what we believe, right? We're not so good at, at listening to other people and, and, you know, challenging and feedback we're not very good at taking it though. You know, I mean, it's a two way street, right? And exactly. that's where the whole open communication comes from. But again, as I said, I think there's so many powerful forces within society today, like trying to get us away from this idea of actually having open communication and, and dialogue. That's why I think the work you're doing is, in, is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, but but I'd say that's the one thing that um, people struggle with, whether in a work situation or in a relationship situation, is how, as you said, how do you have those difficult conversations, but allow it to be a a positive experience for both people ultimately, because mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a back and forth. Yeah, that's it's so the one thing, the one thing that I think is kind of a foundation uh, is important before anything else is you have to have both the same intention mm. right if if both people come into a conversation with the intention to help each other grow to support each other then the conversation will be very easy to have right mm -hmm. if if one or two people of a party um, come in the conversation trying to defend themselves uh, or to prove a point, <laughs> then then it's it's going to be a much harder conversation to have, right? Yeah, no, um, I, I, absolutely. So, yeah, so I, th I think intention is really important. Yeah, and and I and I'm really glad you brought that up because I do think people often go into these kind of conversations without without understanding their intention or even the intention of the other people. So I mean, the other person. So I think setting some of those, uh, you know, establishing that up front is 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 so critical. It's like that. It's like that old saying, you know, do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, absolutely. I think the question that I ask uh, the people I work with often. Uh, when when they want to have difficult conversation is the first question I ask is okay what is what is your intention what are you trying to get from this conversation mm -hmm. but like not just only from this conversation from the like the long term uh, part of it what is the long term part of it you know if they are colleagues or their their colleagues or their boss for example mm -hmm. uh, if you want to have a difficult conversation what is it you want on the long term with that person do you want to have a good work um, relationship where you know you help each other in the future, uh, or do you want to kind of just uh, different different point and and mm -hmm. you know a short um, achieve a short term goal that makes sense? What's the best for you, and then that will determine you know the quality of the conversation you're gonna have.
Yeah, absolutely. And I think running running through your your ten uh, habits here is, is that whole idea of inten- intentionality. Even if you start at the beginning um, and looking, you know, self awareness, you have to do that intentionally. You have to like absolutely. go on a journey of self awareness. So I I, I think a that's probably the the core running through it that in the world we live in today is you have to you have to examine your own intentions before you can go on any journey to be honest mm. yeah and and uh, understand because all relationships are not good to have either <laughs> so so understand if you want that relationship how do you want it what what is the the type of relationship you want to have there are different types we can go mm-hmm. you know for sure. for much longer about this but there, there's both breadth and and depth in relationships and you have to kind of go um by uh, intentionally rather than organically if that makes yeah. sense yeah, no, it, it makes total sense. Well, listen, Nick, this has been fantastic. The work you're doing is so, uh, I believe, is is critical. So all of Nick's information will be below this video. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and the work you do. Yeah, sure. So I'm a uh, life and uh, executive coach. I um, work specifically with people who want to um, get better at relationships in a personal or professional context. So either people that have difficulty uh, into um, improving in their career, for example, and that, that those relationships are stopping them from doing that, or in their personal relationships with parents or, or children, etc. But more of a from a uh, personal professional development uh, right. point of view, right? Uh, so I help all those people. I do I do coaching, uh, which is uh, you know I follow my um, clients for six to twelve months. And then we fix some objectives and and run with that. Yeah, fantastic. Well, like I said, I mean, I don't think I've ever met anybody who ever said to me that all the relationships in my life are perfect and everything is working 100%. So I would encourage people to go check out the work that Nick is doing. So thanks again, Nick. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me.